Um, there we are. Guys, can we see Dina Brass? Can we see Dina's back? ass. That's what we see. A whole bunch of assy. I just was saying um, our guest didn't show up. There we go. I forgot to move my camera. Can y'all see me? Can y'all see her? Yeah, she got the cake, y'all. She got the cake. trying to find my i don't know where the fuck my lighter is no worries um i don't know if she's gonna do readings today but um we could ask her i don't know so my yeah guys coffee. this is dina brass welcome to shuni's web thank you for having me um you're actually my first guest ever so yay um oh, I'm excited. thank you so what have you been up to get us bring us up to speed um what's been Sorry, going on <laughs> so um basically i mean the last time i battled was and, and i can't believe it's been this long my hand Sorry, my kid just tripped and fell and oh hey i'm gonna close the door i closed it on my arm <laughs> all right, all right, baby. Ow. All right, bye. Hey, bye, Mom. Bye, I love you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so the last time I battled was, I don't, three years ago. Can you believe it's been that that long since my last battle? I can't even believe that happened. But anyways, after my last battle, I moved to California. Mm -hmm. So I lived in Long Beach um, in Lake Arrowhead for like two years. Two and a half years and then i moved to houston so i'm in houston texas okay and um i don't know man i i started it it was it was crazy because when i was doing the battle rap i actually wasn't um that's i, I hadn't been reading tarot professionally when i first started mm -hmm. i uh, that happened when i moved to cal well before i moved to california but like, I've been reading tarot cards since I was 11. Oh, wow. I didn't know and, that. Yeah. How'd you so, get into it? I stole my father's tarot deck. So my dad <laughs> reads tarot. My grandma reads tarot. Um, in seventh grade, I stole my dad's tarot deck and brought it to school. Mm -hmm. And I, like, gave readings in the library of my school. And I got suspended for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know? Wow. So do you think it's something that's passed on generationally? Like if you didn't steal it, that it would have been something that you were into already or you would be spiritually inclined to do it or? Um, so I, I definitely think it was, it was meant to be, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I think that that's why I grew up so fast in regards to like the following and the people watching. I mean, I'm like, in like four months, I have like forty-seven thousand followers on TikTok. That's awesome. Now. So you got yeah. a question? They they said, isn't that against the rules of reading cards? I guess is it the stealing of the cards? Is that against the rules? Well, I was eleven years old. I was a baby. <laughs> so I guess not. No, I was oh, a baby. Was they said dad. they thought the tarot cards were supposed to be gifted. So when yes. when did you finally get your own? That or is was that a the myth? biggest myth ever? Yeah, it's that's the biggest myth ever. Um, first of all, tarot cards, yeah, they're 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 great to be gifted, but at the same time, like I was a child. To have something like that be around you in childhood, that's already given to you. It's my father's. Whatever's my father's is mine. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And those were my tarot cards forever. I've had. You know what I'm saying? It's the same. Gotcha. It's a vintage deck from 1972. And, um, I, that's definitely a myth though. Like, I mean, everybody that's watching, you guys could go out and buy tarot cards for yourself and, and everything's going to be fine. I just personally feel like for the people who have never had tarot in their life, if they go out and buy tarot cards, there's nothing wrong with that. I just don't think those people were like destined on earth to be tarot readers. Like, gotcha. It's a generational. I personally feel like those that are that that are 
I don't know. Those that do it, I feel like those are the people who get gifted their tarot decks. So you felt like this was your calling? Oh, yeah. From the beginning. Oh, 100%. 100%. I've I've been reading tarot my whole life. So is this what you do on a full-time basis now? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay. So are you thinking about coming back to battle rap? I would love, yeah, I would love to. I would love to battle. Um, it just me being in California and all the battles really being in New York is because mm-hmm. I, I'm so far removed from like the circuit in California. I didn't know anybody. Right. Okay. Some, you know, Miami, you remember Miss Miami. She said, yeah. do you do black magic or white magic? You know? Uh, no, no, no. That's a really good question. Um, is, is there such thing as white magic? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, enlighten yeah. me. Oh, my God. I thought she was being a racist prick. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> do you do black magic or white magic? Oh, sorry, off. Miami. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so break down the difference. What's the difference between white magic and black magic? In, in simplest terms for us. In, intention. Uh. Intention. What is your intention? See, now, here's the thing, right? I'm not, a, I'm not Wiccan. I, I know nothing about Wiccan. I know nothing about the Wiccan. And I know nothing about witchcraft. I know nothing about other than like I, I actually like I own, I collect like old books. So I have a bunch of books on witchcraft from like the, the 1800s and mm-hmm. like they're like $400 books. Wow. I just, I just like to have them. Like I don't, I never even read them. I just like to, I just like to collect things of the occult. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so I, the difference between white magic and black magic is intentions. You know, one is on the one works with 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 the darker side of things, and one is just white light and impure. See, but people feel like they're so everybody separates themselves. You know what black magic is? I'll tell you right now. Um, uh, I'm a oh my god, I'm such an idiot. That's black magic. You're speaking over your life something negative, like oh, oh okay. I, you know. This is never going to happen. My fucking life sucks. Mm-hmm. That's speaking black magic over yourself. All without time, even knowing. Without even knowing. And you have the power of life and death on your tongue, and that's real. That mm-hmm. goes across That goes across every religion, every culture, every, every form of higher level thought has the notion that, you, that what you say or what you believe creates you know, whether it's Christianity. Jesus mm-hmm. was the biggest teacher of the law of attraction. Gotcha. Everything he says. You know what I'm saying? Like, Okay, so how involved are you in battle rap still? Do you still watch it? Are you still into the culture or not? I never, I never watched battle rap, even from... Even when you were rapping? Mm-mm. Yeah. I would watch my opponents. I would watch my opponents. I'd mm-hmm. watch all their battles. And like... Really, I watched my opponents because I wanted to see the shit other people said to them because I didn't want to say the same thing or like I didn't want to use the same kind of like name flip. I'm I'm the I'm the type of person where I'm a very personal battle rapper. Like I don't I you know, a lot of people that are in battle rap, they write they write bars all the time. Like they come up with bars. I don't Mm -hmm. ever I never did everything that I pretty much say is like tailored to the person that I'm and that's yeah that's gotcha. why <laughs> okay so before I ask you about like the whole black magic in battle rap um you had a couple of questions so one that I got was um law of attraction isn't a thing there's only an action do you feel do you agree or disagree with that law of attraction isn't a thing yeah that's what they're saying that it isn't a thing that it's only an know. action I don't know what that means because everything in your life is reverberated by your own vibration and that's all the basis of law of attraction is. All law of attraction is is saying that however your vibration is is whatever is coming into your life. Like, you know how people be like, oh, God is testing me? God never tests you. Every test that you face is only your own vibration bouncing back to you. That's it. Mm. And no that's one an knows it's karma. It's the, it's karma, karma, and, and we all go through the same things, and everything is very karmic. You know, what you speak over your life, you know, mm-hmm. what you say, it's it's all real. You create your own reality. You know, someone who feels like 
I mean, that's like a victim mentality. It's like, things happen to me. Oh, things happen to me. Nah, take your power back. Understand that what you do, what you say, and what you believe is what comes back to you. God says, Jesus said in the Bible, Jesus said, um, whatever you have faith in, be it unto you. So like whatever you have faith in, be it unto you. If you look in the bank, if you look in your bank account and you see $5, mm-hmm. and you'll be like, nah, I can't buy this. I can't buy that. I only have $5. You're relying on your visible supply. There's no connection to God. There's no faith there that what you need is going to be provided. Mm-hmm. So when you have only faith in your visible supply, don't ask why your life isn't different. Don't ask why. So can I ask you, when you moved, because um, I know you lived in Connecticut for a while, and then you, you moved west, and then now you're down south, you said... Were you completely set with everything that you needed or did you move with some sort of faith? I I had nothing. I packed my kids. I I sold a lot of the things that were, I had a four bedroom apartment, sold everything, packed all that I could inside an SUV and I drove across the country. And I had a friend that had a one bedroom apartment and I went and stayed with her and that and I knew one other person I knew one other person in California and that was Mondo from underground hip hop blog dot com mm-hmm. even that meeting was crazy because I didn't know Mondo but in a couple weeks well a couple months before then I had went to California to go visit one of my friends and she I don't know she was pregnant and crazy so she had flipped out or whatever and when I got to LAX with my bag, she didn't answer the phone. So mm-hmm. I had plane tickets from one day. I had set up to be there for 16 days. Mm-hmm. And she wasn't answering. And I didn't bring money to stay at hotels. Right. I came with like $400 in my pocket thinking that that's going to be like my food. My, mm-hmm. You know, and at this at this point in my life, I was working at the strip club. Like, I mean, I had money, but like, I also had a vintage clothing store that I was paying for. So I had double the rent. So I was paying like, you know, $2,700 a month in rent, two mm-hmm. utility bills, two da la. So wow. like, I didn't really, I didn't really have that much money to play with. Mm-hmm. So I hit Instagram and I just Googled hip hop in LA, like on, on Instagram, like hashtag hip hop LA. And people that look like normal people, like real accounts, normal mm-hmm. people, I just sent them a message like, yo, I have nowhere to stay for the love of hip hop. Can I crash on your couch? Wow. Yes. So listen to this. I found Underground Hip Hop Blog on Facebook and I messaged Underground Hip Hop Blog because I saw that they were L.A. based. And I was like, yo, if y'all, if you know or your network knows anywhere I could crash, I don't have anywhere to stay. Mm-hmm. And I had instagram this rapper another just a random rapper if i could sleep on his couch or whatever and it just so happened that armando who ran underground hip-hop blog also managed artists that i instagrammed so mondo got the message twice wow and he so did they think like, you were crazy <laughs> he thought i was no he thought he was like yo are you a drug addict like are you fucked up in any way like I'm not so, trying to have... So you weren't nervous? This was you, strictly your faith that took you through it? Wow. Strictly my intuition. Like, I know that I'm... I've always had just this sense of me. I'm protected. I feel like my intuition has always been very heightened. So, like, I could feel someone's energy. And I can tell whether I want to fuck with them or not. I can tell. You wow. know? That's... You know? and That's deep. Wow. I, I don't know if I, if I have... I mean, I probably do. I don't want to speak and say I don't have that, but that would be a scary thing to me where you're just going out here and then this girl fucked you over and you're like, hey, who's in the hip hop scene? Can I get a couch? You understand what I'm saying? I'm glad yeah, that works out for you. Yeah, I'm I'm not going to lie, man. Oh, it's my husband. Inbox <laughs> uh, 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 on Instagram. For yeah. the love of hip hop, can I sleep on your couch? Damn. Yeah. That's gangster. Hey, <laughs> listen, you could say what you want. You could say what you want, but at the end of the day, it worked out. I'm going to tell you how it worked out. No, I'm not I'm Mondo, not trying to um judge you. No, 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 it's okay. So Mondo let me sleep on his couch. I became really good friends with him. I stayed with him for 2 weeks. I worked with him on underground hip hop blogs. Um 
whatever, I ended up going back to Connecticut. He was cool as hell. He became one of my best friends. Um, it was underground hip hop blog that shared Johnny Slash's video of him making beats on the on the um, on the machine. And he is now, you know, my boyfriend, and we've been together for three years now. And That's awesome. That's dope. Wow. Yeah, so if it wasn't for under, if I had, if my girl never answered, if my girl had answered the phone, mm -hmm. I would have never met Underground Hip Hop Blog. I would have never saw Johnny's video get shared. It, it's all. So, do you remember the read that you gave me? You probably don't remember it in depth, right? Um. You were asking, was I in, like, a, a new type of relationship? Did me and a friend, like, kind of cross the lines and um, start dealing with each other and stuff? And that's how I knew that you were the truth. Because I had just started dealing with Fetty. And <laughs> I'm like, it's no way that this girl knows this. Like, it, it's no fucking way. Like, I was like, it's no way that she's bullshitting me. So that's how I knew you was the truth when you were like... You know, this is somebody, and I had never said that I felt like our souls, Fetty and I, were connected and uh, connected for a long time. And you had said something like, me and him meet in every life that we've been in. And that we've literally been together like 2,000 years or some odd years that you said. I forget the number of years, but it reminded me of... Um, What's the movie with Will Smith and the girlfriend where they were like meeting each other and different um, lives and stuff. And I was like, how does she know this? So that was crazy. Um, so I knew you was the truth, right? See. So what's going on in battle rap right now, right? Is people are saying that there's black magic happening behind the scenes. That people are using the spiritual world to, like you said, intent to get where they want to go. Do you believe that? Um, I don't put it past no one. I mean, I, I feel like when it comes to the industry, like battle rap aside, or at least battle rap included, when it comes to any industry, whether it be movies, music, all of this stuff, you always hear people saying that there's some sort of energy, just like Beyonce clearly works with the Arishas. You know, she definitely... Uh, puts on you know Oshun like it's it, I mean I don't think there's anything wrong with it I think what like once again it's intention what you I didn't it's, say it again what she said I missed the last part you said you said Beyonce does what I said like in in the entertainment industry it's it's a it's known it's like a well-known thing you know people mm -hmm. deal with different ways and different spirituality like Beyonce she definitely like bigs up Oshun a lot where okay. like, her yellow dresses with her dressing up. I don't think there's anything is that, wrong. So with what that. is that? That's a spiritual being that she's bigging up? Yeah, and that's an Arisha, which would be like the Santero or like Yoruba. Uh with, like uh No idea what you're speaking of. <laughs> Not even going to lie to you. So it's, is this something that they're pulling energy from? Is that what it would be? Or what, what do you get from bigging up those spiritual figures? Um, I just would believe that she is doing work with Oshun. Or doing work with the Orishas. And there's gotcha. nothing wrong with that. Because it would be the same thing for me to... I'm an, you know, I come from Italian roots. And they're very Catholic. So if you were to see me wearing a uh, a necklace with with a saint on it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's nothing. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I have um, Jesus Malverde um, tattooed on my arm, which is uh, he's a patron saint, but in like the more uh, Mexican traditional um, patron saint, and he is the like the he's the narco saint. So he mm -hmm. protects the drug dealers. Ah, and okay. like for me, like you can see him, they have like shrines. If you go into like uh, Botanica, you could find like statues of him. Okay, and, I understand you know, this. You'd give him like money offerings and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, 
the so what's your have, what's your connection to that? Why he protects the narco and the drug dealers? Why do you have it without incriminating yourself? <laughs> no, <laughs> I no, I have it because I feel like he's a beautiful reminder that every day, especially okay. So me working in the strip club, um, me working in that scene. That's a fine line. That's dealing on the darker aspects of energies and life, you know, mm -hmm. the way you look at it, depending on it's the, uh, the underworld is the underworld is the world of sex, the world of lust. Mm -hmm. the, it's the same. It's the same world as the drugs or the, you know, and for me, what it represents is all, you know, every day that I wake up and I don't have to do illegal shit for real gotcha. to, to make money to provide for my family every day that i wake up i don't gotta shove a pack up my ass and cross a border mm -hmm. to put food on the table for my kids that's an amazing day for me that's gotcha. that's a great day because i've been you know into the darker deeper things and where i am right now in my life is a blessing you know mm-hmm that makes sense. So what what is pansexuality? I've, I've been hearing a lot of people throw it around that word and using it as it relates to black magic and that purpose of... I don't know. I never heard the two being related at, at all. Really? Um, yeah. That, so that's the main topic. So that's why I asked you how, you know how uh in tune you are right now when people are talking about black magic as it refers to it being in battle rap and now being um intertwined and them saying that you know people have handlers and different sources that they are preaching to they're saying that there, that there's pansexuality that's going on. No, I'm not saying I believe it. I'm here to debunk it to say Pan is it pansexuality Pansexuality simply means that you are attracted to anyone because of their personality. Mm -hmm. So pansexuality means you could be a man attracted to a man or attracted to a woman. It's like, but you're attracted to them due to their intellect, due gotcha. to the way that they think, due to the way that they present themselves versus I'm straight. I like men or I like women. It's like I'm pansexual. I like any anything that is intellectually on my level i'm attracted gotcha. to smart. i'm attracted to that because know, that's, to, to me the whole thing sounds like a bunch of malarkey crap. yeah <laughs> it does it does and it's like i do know that that it's it's eligible to be around to be anywhere you know what i mean um i i do see that i do understand that but the way they're trying to spin it is like people are giving up their bodies and their buttholes for battles. And it's like, yeah, but I mean, I feel like that's on every, I feel like that is on every level. I feel like that's a, that is a known thing. If you want, when you want something, that's like a known thing in the entertainment industry, like going all the way back. Like that's, I mean, I think that that is real. I really do. I mean, so you think there, you think there's battle rappers that are really like, Take well, me, if, I want to have battle. <laughs> if they are, it's crazy. They, their booty holes can't be that good because ain't nobody that famous right now. For real, for real. Right. Like, I, I I, need to be next level. You understand yes. what I'm saying? Like, I need to be next level if you get in this piece if of the butt. Listen, if I'm giving up my booty hole, there better be, like, Facts. a mansion, you know, no worries, generation. I better never like, choke again. Like, come on. You understand no. what I'm saying? yeah that's yeah so what i've been hearing like passing through doors does that saying mean anything passing through doors yeah like energetic doors like i'm assuming that that's what they're meaning when they say that like what is the context that they're saying like okay so i it was it's footage of murder mook saying when he was prepping for his battle with Tay Rock, he said, go pray to your dark forces. And then there was a video that somebody kind of spun and they were like, oh, in order for people to pass through doors, they've been praying to these dark forces. Do you know that's what not, dark forces not, they would be? That's, 
I mean, there's a ma- there's many dark forces. They could be praying to the fucking devil for all I know. But that's that's I mean that's I, I don't know because that hey listen I went from making thirty thousand dollars a year which is like nothing to I'm making a hundred and thirty thousand dollars this year. Girl, I, give me and, some tarot cards. What? Wait a minute. I, huh? Listen, you make it over a hundred thousand yeah. more than you made last year? Yeah. And I'm not passing through no fucking doors. I just busted Sheesh. my ass. I just worked hard. I invested into my education. I became a certified life coach. And I get, you know, two grand per client. And I have, you know, six That's clients at any given time. You know what I mean? So it's like I teach tarot class. I, I don't know. I feel like there's there's just, you know, haters will say anything. So, like, is there someone that's praying to a dark force to get somewhere? Possibly. You know, if you see somebody that has no talent and they suck real bad and mm-hmm. they're, I mean, and they're just up there, I mean, maybe they did it. But for if you're looking at someone who is really dope or who really does work hard or for really who really does bust their ass mm-hmm. or who really, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't think that they did. Right. That's why I think it's, you know, but that, I hate, but know. back to you and the glow up, that's amazing to go from 30000 to over $100,000 in one year. So how did two you years, really, two oh, years. two years, two years. even years. still, yeah. oh. but so what, what was the biggest hurdle for you getting to where you are now from where you were two years ago? No hurdle, no really? hurdle. I don't even- I don't know how it happens. I don't know. I'm not doing anything different other than uh, really showing up for myself, really, you know, believing in myself, not being afraid to be seen. And I think that that's one of the biggest areas that people people get caught up in is that they're afraid to be seen. They're afraid to put themselves out there. It, it's crazy, but like, yo, I just like I just started like doing tarot professionally three years ago, and. Mm-hmm. So that was like, I had my last battle three years ago and I was nervous to come out, eat, I swear to you, and, and start doing my lives and doing tarot because I'm like, people, you know, I'm a battle rapper. People are going to be like, how did she go from being a battle rapper? Yeah. To, oh my God, not psychic. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and, and I just had to say, fuck it. Like, it, this is what I want to do. This is what I was born to do. This is what my calling is. This is what I feel really drawn to. And I just did it. And I went in full force. And I went in not worrying about what other people had to say. And I went in with the mindset that if someone had something to say, they weren't going to be my client anyway. Mm. If you got some shit to say, you weren't going to put money in my pocket anyway. You were not going to get a reading. You were not going to believe in what I had. So it's easy. When you show up in your true, authentic self, you're going to get rid of the fake people around you. Absolutely. Because they're going to... You, they're going to talk shit. They're going to leave. They're going to delete you. They're not going to want to see your post. Let those people go. Let mm-hmm. them go. We're, we're all so concerned with like, will people like me? Are you fucking kidding me? If somebody doesn't like me, then they can go kiss my fucking ass. That's it. That's right. That's right. You so know? do you think your your kids are following in your footsteps? Do, have they any of your kids picked up on... Um, you know, the spirituality. Because I know, um, what's your older son's name? Gil? Gil. Yes. he. I know he used to do little raps and stuff like that. So I know he kind of, you know, follows what you do. Um, is he still that way? Oh, yeah. Um, I don't push it on the, the kids. You know, sometimes he'll come to me and be like, Mom, I want to do readings with you. And I'll be like, okay, fine. You can do readings with me. Elias loves the pendulum he likes to hold the pendulum and do yes or no's Mm -hmm. but like the other day he was like uh because he knows that if he comes on and he does pendulum reads he'll do like pendulum reads for like two dollar donations like Mm two dollars per question and and that's fine you know if he puts out value and and he gets paid for the value that he puts out that's fine but he came to me the other day he was like Mom, I really want to get this game. Let me do pendulum reading so I so I can uh. get to, I said, uh-uh, no, 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 no. You're not going to be up here doing it. You don't do it for the money. Like, when I started doing this, I had no idea I was going to get paid. Like, I had no idea. 
none until people are like, why aren't you charging? And I'm like, I don't know. They're like, well, how much is a private? And I started off, my private readings were $45 for an hour. Wow. So how much are your privates now? 150 Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Have you thought about doing an OnlyFans where you no, do I'm your not. privates and you're still completely 100% dressed? <laughs> no. Um, nah. Nah, I don't want to saturate the field any more than it is. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, I think that I have like a subscribers button on Facebook now. So like, I think I'd be thrown out because I'd be like a private for a private. Give me some extra tips, and they'd probably be like, "No, ma'am, you're thrown out. This is not the way <laughs> tarot card reading goes." No, um, a friend of mine and I, a friend of mine. So I went to school to be a life coach. I graduated in October. And a girlfriend of mine who also went to um, life coaching school with me, she has been a dancer as well for like, you know, a couple of years. And she's absolutely gorgeous and her body is fantastic. And we had like this joke about like, but kind of serious about her doing and only fans, but life coaching. So like mm. her basically naked like giving advice i think that that would be but I believe it or not not everybody is naked on there there's someone that's in like the top um i guess they call them impressions that she's just they're doing music on there and people are like subscribed and she makes a lot of money and stuff like that so I, i'm not gonna lie i thought about it i wanted to put my feet on there and then i was like okay. you know what what? Yo, I'm, I'm not gonna my, do it. I will sell my dirty panties. I will fuck it. Yo, my boyfriend, he would, my boyfriend would yoke me up. He is yes. not that. He do not, no. It's just feet. That's what I said. He's like, hell no. He's like, if anyone's gonna fucking jerk off your feet, it's gonna be me, you know? I'm like, That's hey. funny. So, yeah. do you, so you still do readings. I know I, I've seen some of your lives and you still do readings. Are those readings that you're charging people and they're allowing you to do them live? Or do you still just yeah. do exhibitions for people? No, no, no. So I go, when I go live, um, I primarily do my live readings on TikTok. Um, it's 3333 to mm -hmm. ask a question and to get an answer. And then I'll do like, okay, guys, share this video or press the follow button and I'll see your name on the bottom. And when you follow or share it's not guaranteed, but the first person I see their name, I'll give them a free reading. Ah. So I'll do like a free, quick three card pull mm -hmm. for like a share or a follow. But primarily, uh, you know, I'm getting like 10, 10 to 12 to more than that reads when I go live. Um, so what, what other platforms are you on? I know your Facebook, you said TikTok. Instagram. Um, Instagram. Give your name because you have some people that um you know are interested. They're liking you. They want to see what platform you're on. Oh, Dina Brass. Everything. It's just Dina Brass on everything. Everything. So it's D I N A B R A S S. Dina Brass. Yeah. That's Everywhere. awesome. Every pla every platform, and that's another thing. It's like, you know, like I love I love people, but I feel like marketing you know and that's what i'm saying is like it's more than it's not like i'm just a tarot reader and i'm just doing it like i said for money it you have to have some sort of business strategy around what you do mm -hmm. so like no matter what keep it all uniform because if somebody wants if somebody sees me on facebook and i'm dina brass and they're like oh i love her let me look at see if i can find her instagram if they type in dina brass but i'm but i'm sugar pop 27 on instagram they're not gotcha. gonna find you. You gotta mm -hmm. make it a way so that everything's that's connected. Marketing. That's mm -hmm. marketing one oh one. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Everybody has the opportunity to be their own brand, but when you're your own brand, that should be your brand. Your name. Absolutely. You no. Know? You kicking that shit, girl. You kicking that shit. Okay. Oh, so and can I can I tell you that right now my private readings? Are forty percent off until Christmas. Really? Yeah. So look at that. If anybody wants to get a private reading, they're forty percent off until Christmas. You use the code Shuni. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> the, the code is Xmas. You said what? Xmas. Xmas X is the code. Did I ask you? Somebody asked where black cats 
um, bad luck. Did I ask that? I love black cats. I heard that was a myth that they were bad luck. Yeah, that, I mean, I think that um, black cats in general are not bad luck. Um, a black pack, a, um, a black cat crossing your path is what where the superstition actually comes from, and that's the same thing with um, ravens or crows. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it definitely could be a warning or a sign that something's changing or transmuting. Um, I think it depends on like how you feel. I think it depends on there if there's a connection. Like if you're, I'll give you a, for example. Um, where I was living before, I woke up three days in a row with a black raven, like a big old raven at my window, like making the weirdest fucking sounds you could possibly really? imagine. Yeah, the, yo, ravens are crazy. Did you know that they can talk? No, I didn't know that. Just like a parrot, ravens can learn how to talk, just like a wow. parrot. They can mimic sounds and everything. Ravens look like crows, but they're just a little bit bigger mm -hmm. and they're more vocal. They actually crows are huge. Oh, so ravens? I, I would have been scared. <laughs> I'm terrified of birds, honestly. Like, I am. Like, especially if one gets in a building. Like, they had to send me home from work because it was like <laughs> a really little small bird. But he was just flying around the floor, terrorizing. And <laughs> to me, it looked like the biggest thing coming to my face. And I was in tears. I was shaking. And at first, they were laughing. Like, okay, what's wrong with her? And I'm like, no, I'm legit scared of oh birds. God. And he's inside. Like, y'all got to either get him out or y'all going to have to send me home. I'll take the write up or whatever. And they sent me home. I was just terrified. Like, I couldn't do it. Funny. Like. Well, I needless to say, it. my grandmother passed away a week later after that raven was at my window. Uh, so, I mean, so you think that was the warning? or Yeah, and I, and I don't think it's a bad thing. I think mm -hmm. it's the way that I think it's the way that nature and the universe connects you. Because, yo, God doesn't speak to us in, like, it says in the Bible, you know, a burning bush fucking spoke to whatever. Like, that shit doesn't happen. You know, God speaks in many ways. Mm -hmm. You know, often in, in numbers, you'll see numbers over and over again. I know that there's probably people watching that have seen like 111 or mm -hmm. 333 or 222. And a lot of times, and I try to tell people, especially like, because when people like book a session to do like a spiritual advising and they come to me and they're like, I'm seeing this number all the time. Like, what does it mean? It's like, just re like, just take it as a synchronicity and let it go don't hold on to it and like what is this and start freaking like, out yeah just let it go like every time i look and i notice numbers that are you know repetitive or something like that i always thank the universe i just be like thank you universe i'm on the right path you know one two three four i'm on the right path like and then i just let it go so and have you ever been able to, or has someone come to you to speak to dead relatives? Are you able to do time. that? Yeah. I, oh, so okay. that's, yep. That's um, a medium session. Those are on my website as well. Um, that's a soul. I call it a soul reconnection. I have a 30 minute and I have a 60 minute. Mm -hmm. The reason why I have a 30 minute is because I haven't really seen a lot of mediums that have 30 minute sessions. So a lot of people that are out there, they're charging, which is fine and it's worth it. But if they're good, like $300, $350 for the hour to connect with a loved one that's passed away. And I just kind of wanted to make it a little bit more accessible mm -hmm. for people because not everybody has $300. But right. Has that's a lot. To talk to. So I do mine for $123 for a half. And then I do for an hour, I do $222. So on the scale of mediums, I feel like I'm accessible. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what's the, what's the, I don't want to say freakiest thing, but what's the weirdest thing that you've experienced during a reading? Um, or a medium session, whichever. I'll tell you right now, because it's, there's a bunch of crazy things. Um, my boyfriend, and I don't mean like put his business out there. He'd probably get mad at me if I, whatever, but I don't, I don't really care because it's okay. But like my boyfriend's mother had passed away when he was younger, not too young, but like, you know, 
like maybe seven years ago. And um, I've never dated anyone that's ever had like a close relative pass away. Mm -hmm. So um, I basically had a conversation out loud that, you know, don't come to me. Don't tell me nothing. Because in the beginning of our relationship, I was like, please do not. I'm no, I'm keeping myself bordered up because I don't want to be like, I don't want anything happening where I know something or I can hear something and then have to say it to him and then have him be like fucking weirded out and like be like, nah, I'm not talking to you no more, you know? Mm -hmm. But it was about um, a year and a half into our relationship and he was about to do one of the biggest shows he's ever done. He opened up for West Side Gun. That's big. Yeah, he was like, yo, Dina, pull some cards for me and tell me how it's going to go tomorrow. So I went in the other room. I'm like, getting ready to pull cards. Now, mind you, he don't talk about his mother ever. We don't talk about his mother ever. Like, it's just something that we, it's just un- unspoken. We just don't talk. I don't know. He's never really told me anything, you know? I don't even know her. At, at this time, I didn't even know her name, really. Mm-hmm. And I went to go pull cards for him. And as soon as I pulled cards, I literally heard. Now, this is going to sound fine, but when it comes to medium work, when I do medium sessions, a lot of times the way that I hear spirit, it's not like having a conversation with you where I can hear your voice. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when I channel, I hear it in my own voice. That's why it's hard to decipher whether I'm making it up or thinking about it uh. because it's my own voice. The same way I can look at this and I can say, this is a vape. And then I can shut my mouth and I can say it in my head and I can hear myself say it. That's exactly what it sounds like when I connect to someone's loved one. Mm-hmm. So I'm so it's ready. nothing like the movies where you hear no. a weird, different, demonic, strange voice. No, wow. and, and I'll actually, I'll talk about um, that too because, well, I'll get into that in a second. But so the moment I pulled his cards, uh, all I thought was, right, all I heard was, don't worry about your show. Worry that you forgot my birthday. Love, mom. Wow. So I'm sitting there. I start shaking because, <laughs> like I said, I don't talk to You don't want to tell him that. I don't want to tell him. So I wrote it down on a piece of paper, okay? I got a piece of paper out and I wrote it down. Don't worry about your show. Worry that you forgot my birthday. Love, mom. And I folded the paper up. I put it to the side and I ran out. And I'm like, yo, John, when is your mother's birthday? And he's like, I don't know. I'm like, can you please find out? And he's like, why are you freaking out? Like, wh-? I'm like, just find out when your mother's birthday is. And he's like, okay, mind you, we never talk about his mother. I don't ask him nothing about his mother. And here I am like, what's your mother's birthday, right? And so he, I'm like, text your father right now. Text your brother right now. So he texts him. Wait, and boom, he gets a text back. Uh, my mom's birthday's tomorrow. Wow. And it was the same day of his show. That's crazy. Don't worry about your show. Worry that you forgot my birthday. Wow. And so when he said, he's like, it's tomorrow. I looked at him. I'm like, I grab his hand. I didn't move. I didn't move from where I was. I grab his hand. I'm like, come here. I'm like, I know this is fucking weird. And I'm sorry that this is so fucking weird. But I picked up the paper and gave it to him. He opened it up. And it was, don't worry about, you know. And because I didn't want to move, I don't ever want him to think like that. I went and wrote it. Like mm-hmm. so, it was it was perfect the way that it worked out. That's and, crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I would have been dying. Oh man. Well, so what I was saying is, for everybody that's watching, have you ever had those moments on your own where I don't know you're brushing your teeth? And then you start having a conversation with yourself where you're like brushing your teeth and you're like, oh, yeah, that is a good idea. It's like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Where you're like, yeah, I talk to oh, myself all the time. All the time oh. Or like when you're, you know, if you're alone and then all of a sudden like you think something and then you're like, why didn't I think of that? And then you're like, wait a minute, I did just think of that. What am I talking about? Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, I'm a firm believer that a lot of those thoughts that come in. 
you like when you're not thinking and a thought comes in like it like when you're thinking to yourself telling yourself something i'm a firm believer that those are not that isn't your thought it's your that is coming from somewhere else the same way that i connect to spirit is the same way because now i understand that so like there'll be times where i'm taking a shower and i'm like oh my god that is you know wow you're right and then i'm like okay who the fuck am i talking to because Right. I'm me. You you got a question, Fetty? No, I was I, I was just going. I thought she was going to ask if, if you talk to yourself a lot. Oh, I do talk to myself, but you talk to yourself more than I do. Yo, I talk to myself out loud sometimes. I know. I hear you <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with talking to yourself, though. Like I think it's good. Like. Do you, you don't find anything wrong with that, do you, Dina? No. Like, who doesn't want to talk to themselves? Yeah. That's your Somebody said that's your higher self. <laughs> I mean, it could be your higher self, but it also could be. That's all I'm saying is I'm just offering that to y'all, that it could be a loved one that has passed away. Is that mm-hmm. I'm just offering that. You know what I'm saying? But it definitely could be your higher self. That's what's up. So... I mean, if you guys have more questions, you can type them in in the comment box real quick because she can't see the comments. So, um, real questions because y'all are crazy in here. What um, is it? Why? What are they saying? Somebody said, did you vote for Trump? <laughs> I didn't vote at all because like, I would have disappointed y'all. <laughs> Like, uh, come on. And somebody keeps asking for you to do vape tricks. I, I don't even know if that's a thing. Like, oh, my God. What? I don't know why they're asking that. If you lose an argument to yourself, then you need a life coach from Tina Bra- You know what? <laughs> do you see visions? Um, Like, that's so real. Oh, you do know how to do tricks. There you go. Whoever <laughs> was asking for tricks. I'm um, doing Like, that's so raven? Do that. Do that. I do. I mean, yeah, I do have visions. Yeah. No, I'm not doing that, baby. Do it. Can I'm on, please? I want to see a trick. Okay, bye. Vape trick. Oh. So I I see people in my house. Um, I'm not afraid of the spirits. Um, why do you think that is that I'm able to see it? So I feel like. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> All right, go, go, go. Baby, I love you. Go, bye. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. I don't want to leave. Um, uh, so I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like we all have the ability. I feel like we all have the ability. Um, I just personally feel like some people are just more open than others, or some people are just a little bit more connected with others. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like people that are more connected with themselves are able to see or feel or hear more things because there's less of a blockage. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, like, so um, sorry, I'm answering a question in the comments. Um, my mom can see them, but Fetty can't see them or my kids or anybody in here. I do tell him when I see them, but no. He, um, as far as in my house, I'm the only person that can see them in my direct home um but they don't scare me what is what's indigo what does that mean someone saying i'm indigo what does that mean we're we're all indigo children we're we're all indigo children what does that mean empathic like an empath oh i'm definitely that yeah definitely i i do i've said that to to my husband actually recently and i don't know if he kind of knew what i meant but um it's hard. I don't I don't like it all the time that I can't control how I suck up everything, every ounce of everyone that's in the room, their energy, whether it's good, bad, ugly, and different. And I try to cipher through it to try to figure out what it is and whose energy is that. What's that? That is what you need. Okay. This right here, this this is black tourmaline, okay? You're going to want to get yourself a black tourmaline necklace. Okay. This is, this is black tourmaline with Herkimer diamonds. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, this is wonderful, but like, this is my own personal piece. 
Um, if you want, Just let me get a little piece of it. Let me. <laughs> yeah, I have. I have a bunch. I have a bunch. So we yes. have a metaphysical shop. Um, MySpiritualRx.com is our website. And my cousin is the one that does all of the wraps and all of the necklaces. Send it to me. Yeah, I will I'm after. I'm a Cancer. Um, what what's your sign, Dina? I am a double Taurus. Double Taurus. What does double Taurus mean? My sun is in Taurus. My moon is in Taurus. And then my rising sign is Leo. Ah. So when you say I'm a Cancer, what mm -hmm. you're saying is, my sun sign is in cancer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're in order for. Please go. Is it you? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sit here while you do interview, I think. No, no. No, no. My kids are the only ones whose energy pulls mine off. It's like, uh, get away. Uh, I love you. <laughs> I'm in the middle of doing his hair. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> She'll be back. Hey, look at my, hey, my off-brand bun. Come on. We're almost done, I promise. Go, baby. Okay, I want to play games with mom's phone while she does my hair. Go, go. She's almost done. I promise. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> um, okay, I was saying black tourmaline. So we were talking about the sun sign of, of oh, the cancer. Okay. So um, in order to really understand when people say like, okay, I'm this or I'm that, that really means absolutely nothing because in order to really understand your personality and why you act the way that you do, you're going to want to look at your full natal chart and your full natal be the one that shows you where all the planets were in what house the moment you were born you were born and, uh, and that's what really shapes your personality your destiny kind of your you know like your what's best best for your career and all that stuff and my cousin Anne does full astrological readings and you can actually book one on my spiritual rx.com mm. in the astro rx section of the website but she's like amazing at what she does so your rising sign is what shows your personality to the world or the face that you put on in front of everyone. Mm -hmm. So, like, for me, my rising sign is Leo. And then you can understand why, because my sun and my moon is Taurus, and they're so, like, calm and grounded and, like, mm -hmm. and that's not me. You know what I mean? What so, see, so what like, do you identify more with, the Leo? Yeah. Oh, 100%. And 100%. so your actual birthday is what? April 28th. So you actually are a Taurus, but you connect more with the Leo. Yeah, gotcha. because just the way that my... Because it didn't That's make interesting. sense. That's interesting. You know, a lot of it didn't make sense to me until I looked up my full natal chart. And mm -hmm. then I was like, oh, wow, that's why I act the way that I do. Because you know, I just never could connect with the Taurian energy. The older I get the more connected I am with my Tory inside. Like, I'm a plant mom. Like, I don't know if you could see, but... Hold on, because... Oh, you yeah, have a I'm ton not. of plants. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but... We've seen a little bit of it. How do I... Okay. Oh, yeah, you have a ton. Yes, honey. I know. Give me you a know, second. I mean... And that's yeah, your like, tourist side. Yeah, absolutely. Like, just want you know, nice, nice, nice things and good food and. That's a lot of good energy. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, I appreciate you coming. Is there anything you want to leave us with? You want to show us? Somebody was saying for me to get a read. I'm not doing it right now. No, really? <laughs> I mean, if you want to do one or two cards, you can, but I don't know about what everybody in my business. Um, I'll keep I'll I'll um I'll keep a good discernment with what I say. Okay. Um, go ahead. Do you want to ask a question? Who me? Um, could I? 
No, see, I kind of wanted to be a surprise. I was going to say, when is this baby coming out? <laughs> okay, yeah, that's... Oh, soon. Hold on. Soon. Did is something it a pop out? Yeah. It, that always happens. Like, when you did my last read, something popped out. Is it a boy? It's a girl. It is? It is. Oh, she's going to be fiery. What are we what are we in right now? Anne, what are we in right now? What is the what is this Anne? What what is the next what is the next fire sign from now? Sagittarius! Sagittarius! Yeah. So that means she's oh, I mean, she's supposed I mean, to be like, January sixth, so that means she may be January born. January sixth, is month? that Capricorn? That's Capricorn, yeah. Uh, what if she comes out? What if she comes out sooner? Hey, I was supposed to be a sad. Oh, and she could be on the cuff. That's what I was that's, thinking. That's my cousin Anne over there. <laughs> Hi. That's what I was thinking, to be honest, that it would be kind of early. She might come out sooner than you expect. Even if it's still a I feel that way. Could be on the cuff, like. There's a certain period of time that there's borderline of pulling from both energetic signs. And that's only a part of who she is. She could be saturated. That is, or is it a she? Yeah, it, she. No, yes. Yeah, she. Yeah, I couldn't hear her that clearly. Um, there could be a saturation of saturation energy in her chart, even if her sun sign is Capricorn. I have a uh, serious energy, but I'm a Mhm. Mm four weeks from now. When's four weeks from now? Um, that's the week before I'm due. So that's actually his birthday would be four weeks from now, like that December like, twenty six, twenty seven. That's where I feel like it's gonna happen. I'm gonna let you know if you're right. So I I officially have five weeks left. He, here he comes dancing because he's waiting for the four week thing to happen. Um, wow. Yeah, a Christmas baby. Do one for you. I don't know how that would work. How? Who is it? What's their name? Um, this T Breezy One Hundred. Okay. This is worth a prop, T Breezy. Go ahead and throw in some props for me. <laughs> oh, something popped out. Yeah, T Breezy, you need to get. You need to get up and out, yo. You need to get up and out of your comfort zone that you've kind of built for yourself. Um, the feeling of not wanting to be alone or not wanting to be by yourself is kind of majorly coming up right now. Um, also, uh, weighing out your options in regards to, like, your your changes, right? He because said very true. You have major, you're holding yourself uh, back energetically. I don't know if that's out of fear of protecting your energy from other people, but you're doing yourself a disservice because now is high energy for you to, to be nice to yourself. Like, literally be nice to yourself. Um, I think the more that you give to yourself or the better you are to yourself, the more of the transformation that you're afraid to happen is going to happen faster, but just get it over with. Why are you afraid of change? Why are you afraid of things being different? Why, you know, and maybe you're a creature of habit, you know, maybe you're the type of person who doesn't necessarily like change. You like things the way that they are, you know, you don't, you don't like to have things that you don't know happen or and there might be some fears there in regards to like, okay, well, well then what would that bring to me? Or what would that mean? Or how would, how would people react? At the end of the day, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Cause if you know that everything is for your greater, higher good, then you've got to just embrace those changes, embrace those, embrace that energy, you know? Wow. Uh, that was big. He said he got content with how things are content with how things I could see that. Especially during the pandemic. 
to being content to what things are doing. So a lot of you are saying, please do me. Drop a prop. The first prop that I see, that'll be the person that I'll tell your name. And the most expensive prop, the most expensive prop too. Not, not a penny. <laughs> Drop it. And uh, there we go, Miguel. You got 30 seconds. Got 30 seconds. Miguel, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> that's a pretty good one. All right. Time's running up. We'll go with Miguel. Uh, Miguel has similar energy to the last read that we did. But mm -hmm. I'm going to pull cards to see what the difference is is you know what i'm saying like very similar energy to what i was saying to the last person but that's just going off energetic connection now miguel the different the difference here within your reading my friend is that you're in your head so much that you create your own roadblocks. You put up invisible barriers that aren't fucking real. And that's what stops you from getting out of your comfort zone. I think you're very nervous with the way people... I, okay, so like, I don't want to say you're nervous, okay? But how about this? If you're worried about other people's view of you so much... You're not going to follow your heart. You're not going to follow your gut because you're going to be so concerned with how it's going to be received, what people are going to think and what they're going to say. And, you know, we would all love to say, well, I don't care what anyone thinks of me and I, I don't care about. But. No, that's not the case. Like you tie yourself to your own negative thoughts like you have to realize, Miguel, that you are not your thoughts. We are so conditioned to, to think that what we think or what we believe is us. And that's not true. And I'll give you a for example. If I was to meet you at a party and I would say, hi, I'm Dina. Who are you? What would you say to me? When I say, who are you? What would you say? You would say, I am Miguel without a thought. But at the end of the day, how do you know you're Miguel? Because somebody else told you you were Miguel and you went with it. You didn't argue with it. There's so many aspects of that in our life. There's so many beliefs that we have, likes that we have and dislikes that we have based off of the conditioning of birth and based off the conditioning of the environment, based off the mm. conditioning of the circumstances and based off the conditioning of, of the traditional cultural whatever that we have and there's not there's not a lot wrong with that in many aspects but i just challenge you miguel to to do a little bit of shadow work and going deeper within yourself and ask yourself yo what do i like and want what what do i want what does my perfect life look like and why does it feel like it's out of reach why does it feel like it's unattainable and then you'll start to pull up those shadow beliefs those negative thoughts that come up for you that aren't real. They're just beliefs that we already have preset in ourselves. And you'll be able to challenge those things and then change the way you're viewing things, you know? That's awesome. Wow. Woo! He said, thank you. Look at that. Uh, once again, she's Dina Brass on all social media. That was amazing. Oh my gosh. You guys got knowledge for free, like a little bits and pieces she dropping that science on y'all um i know some of y'all said y'all followed her so make sure you do um and let her know where you've seen her and everything like that um she's a friend of the show you should rhyme your readings that would be dope um, i do i do sometimes on tiktok that's dope let me ask you a question sure. Has she ever, uh, like is it or is it possible to like when she was battling to like uh pull somebody cards and like find out something like I don't know like um I'm yeah it's possible I don't do that because that would have been hella fire though you would consider that cheating yeah really yeah 
But if it, but if it's your gift, then ain't it like kind of meant to be used? Nah, if it's okay, just like okay, I'm gonna put it to you like this: if I'm a private investigator, if that's my job, right? Um, there's just certain things I'm like, or maybe not a private investigator because I feel like they would do things like that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what job like a I doctor? Think I, like oh, I'm like, like a like a um like a psychiatrist or, or, or like somebody that's supposed to uh keep it personal or something. What they call that shit? Yeah. Well I call it a, I call it a spiritual hippo law. So it's funny that you oh. say the doctor shit because here's the thing, if I'm not invited into your okay, you wanna talk about black magic, right? If I'm oh, that's not the invited tent into your energy mm -hmm. if you haven't said please read me then if i'm reading you that's like you walk into the other room and me going through your phone like it's mm. just could you do it like that's like I using those those glasses that you could see through people's clothes yeah without them there knowing. you go there you go yeah that okay like, i get it but that would have been fire if you really pulled somebody's card while pulling their card. Oh, that would have been dope. That's I know, a fire angle. I don't, it's crazy, but I feel like I don't need to. And I feel like that's I agree. Why I, I feel like that's why I'm re so good at, you know, so it's what kind I of do like you feel as like, well. It's kind of like you oh, feel yeah, like... Oh, yeah, they call x-ray glasses. It's, it's kind of like you feel like... Uh, you know how uh, Marvel, like I, when they try to hide their, uh, their powers... You feel like that walking around? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> He's ridiculous. Oh, oh my God, Dina, I can't thank you enough for coming on. Um, amazing conversation. You're super insightful, and hopefully, we can get you back in battle rap at some point because yeah. you have a ton of fans that are. Feeling the void of you not being here with your unique personality and, you know what I mean, just your energy in a whole. So hopefully we can get you back at some point. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. That's awesome. I'm going to have my people talk to your people because we need you yeah, back. Right. We need you back. I appreciate you so, 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 so much. Guys, this has been Zena Brass. Um, they're saying dope interview. They... Loved you. Um, I will talk to you, you know, behind the scenes and everything. I definitely appreciate you. And tell your little one he can get his hair done now. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go do it. Oh, my God. Right. Bye. Bye. Thanks again. Bye. Bye. Um, here we are. Give me one second to change the screen. Back to me. Um, yeah, that was dope, guys. Like, I, I thought that was really, really, really dope. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> the white witch is good with me. She's not a witch, T-Breezy. <laughs> you play too goddamn much, man. Um, I thought that was, like, very insightful. Like, really was. Um, the comments were, yeah, you guys were on a roll with these comments like seriously um but i thought that was really dope i really enjoyed her um what questions y'all got for me because we about to get up out of here we've been on here about two solid two hours um i appreciate everyone who shared the broadcast who stayed on um all of the props you guys did really well so um i never want to leave you without answering questions comments concerns I ain't got nobody on the menu yet. Um, as you know, I'll be back 2021. So hopefully they got somebody good for me. Um, yeah. Yeah, I did. Thank you, Melo. Um, my daughter's name is Dallas Moon. I'm excited to see if, um, you know, Dina is right saying the four weeks. Because I actually feel like she is going to be born in December to be honest um so yeah um i would battle casey no we haven't battled and we were set up before the um pandemic and COVID hit so thank you hopefully i'll see you before christmas see breezy we got a ton of shows before that yes um 
what is this week? Thursday. I will try to set it up for Farrah to be here on Thursday to talk with us for a good, at least an hour or something. You know what I mean? Hey, Greg. Um, we've been we've been wanting to get Farrah on for so long, so um, we'll definitely get Farrah in here. You know what I mean? So that'll be dope. What else? What other questions y'all got for me? Thank you for the congratulations and the new family. Yeah, baby's got to drop. We're getting ready, moving things around. Um, got to pack my baby bag. I'll probably do it right after the baby shower. I think I should have been did it, but after the baby shower, I will be full term anywhere between 37 weeks to 40 weeks. You can have your baby. So wasn't that bar exam epic? We had so much fun fun um oh congratulations that's awesome congratulations thank you thank you yeah but i had an amazing time with you guys i'm gonna try to go live for the baby shower i am i'm definitely gonna try to go live i don't know if i'll be able to because i think the ethernet cord is gonna have to be connected up and I'm not sure if my cord is long enough. But I'm going to try to do it. Twins. Whoa. Congratulations. I do not envy you. Um, but yeah, that's my intention. For us to go live and live stream at least a little bit of it. Um, it's this Sunday. If not, like I said, I'm going to you know, post pictures and stuff. And I'll definitely share with you guys. Thank you. I appreciate it so much, Miguel. I'll try to remember your name because I know your name now. Um, but yeah, you guys have been in the web. I will be back on Thursday. Portugal in the house. Yes. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys Thursday. Have a good night. Peace.